I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm here to do my review of the Freya sweater from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. I'm also going to include a tutorial as part of this near the end of the video and I will post exactly what time down below so you can see when that is but how to uh, alter a neckline and then fit a neckband to it so I will be adding that at the end of the video so just look out for that. So I got the stretch book in December and I was thinking about making some of the things from it. The Freya sweater has been made by lots and lots of people and people kind of swear by the pattern. It's become a tried and true pattern for them and I thought I'd like to give it a try. Now normally I've got a self-drafted t-shirt pattern that I use but is um, looser fit and I have been making the plantain tee a few times as well and I have done a review video on that as part of this jersey top series and I'll post a link to that down below as well. So the Freya top, I really do like the look of it. It feels like a really good basic top to wear and also it looks quite stylish. It seems like everyone who wears it looks quite stylish in it. One thing I was a little bit concerned about was the high neckline. Now I find for me, um, anything with a high neckline, I don't really get on with very well. Um, I have tried a few different things but I feel, I'm not, I'm not really sure, it feels very, whenever I wear something with a high neckline, it feels very tight across the back of my neck and then across the front and it often feels I then can't breathe. So I don't know if that's more to do with anxiety or if that's just to do with the shape of my body and I'd need to make a few alterations. But I chose to hack all of mine, edit all of mine so they have a lower neckline instead of having that high neckline. I did try to have the higher neckline on the first one but then I ended up cutting it down anyway just because it was too tight on, on my throat and I just didn't like that. There's no point in being uncomfortable but it is a really lovely pattern especially with this neckline that I've hacked. So I've made a few different versions. Now I have changed the neckline on all of them but I've made this one which is a shorter sleeve version and then the longer sleeved version. I'm tempted to try the cowl neck version which is in the book as well. I haven't had a chance to do that yet and I think I might wait until it's winter again to try that. But I think definitely with a nice soft viscous jersey or something that would be really lovely to have that extra drape. So I'm going to give that a try eventually. So as always the instructions are really easy to follow. Um, and all of the patterns that I've used from Tilly and the Buttons so far, the instructions have been really easy. I more kind of gaze over them just because actually I know how to put a t-shirt together and I know the method that she was using, but I did think that it was really clearly laid out. You can see all your information in there. And actually I would really recommend the stretch book if you are looking for some basic jersey patterns to explore. So my first version is this one. And I made this out of a cotton jersey that I got from John Lewis. I did have some before that I had from Fabric Godmother, which I made a dress with. But this is a jersey that you've probably seen. And it's got birds on it and flowers. Really nice quality to work with as well. I don't know where they've got any left, but if I can find some, I will link it below for you. So this was the first one I made and I made it just direct from the pattern apart from the neckline. So originally I had the neckline higher, but when I tried it on, um, it was it was much too high, so I did alter it. So what I have done with this one is I put it together and then I put the neck band in, and I'm not sure if that's the method in the book or not, but it's just so I can check the neck band. And I do the same with the Frankie T as well. I put it together and then put in the neck band. I, I've not had any problems doing it that way, but I just, I need to check the neckline basically. So all together, this is straight from the pattern, no alterations. I didn't make alterations for, to the sleeves or the length at all, or even the hips. And I think with this one, I made a size five or six. I think I was supposed to make a five according to my measurements, but I thought actually I do want it to be a slightly looser than that. And so I make, went for a six. I'm really pleased that I did because actually I really like the fit on it. So it fits across my chest really well. Uh, the sleeve length is just perfect and the length is just perfect. I feel like these patterns are made for somebody with 
like my shorter bo body kind of thing. Um, so really pleased with that. It means that I'm looking at other Tilly Buttons patterns to just see those as well. And I did change the neckline on this one. So I did cut it down and then I halved the neck band and then just attached it on. And in the shoulders, I have used cotton tape to just secure there, just to make sure they don't get stretched out. I have overlocked it throughout and I feel like the finish looks really professional, really like the look of overlocking in a garment and I'm really pleased with this make overall. The next, ver the next version I made was this one and I've been wearing this, I've worn this quite a few times already, I think I only made it a couple of weeks ago and I've worn it again like four times already. So again I've hacked the neckline, this fabric is a fabric from Pin and Sew and it's a uh, French terry but quite it's quite nice and thin um, you've got that loop texture in the background there and just the same I didn't make any adjustments to this one um, the sleeves and the hem absolutely the right length and it's just the neckline that I changed I did change the arm size slightly in this one now I'm finding with this I'm getting a bit of gathering here um, which I don't particularly mind but sometimes I feel like that's not it doesn't fit me the best that it can because I've got that gathering there but what I would say is these tops are really comfortable I've got enough to move whereas sometimes um, tops like this that I've made in the past where they shrink a little bit in the wash because they just do or sometimes they don't quite have enough width at the back and I find myself feeling like my shoulders are all hunched like this um these don't do that so I'm almost thinking it doesn't matter that this looks like this here because actually I, I, it feels really comfortable and it still looks it looks fine N nobody would really notice it's just it's just me so I did fill it back with that on this one but actually it didn't make much of a difference so I feel like it might be something to do with the length of this front side so I'm gonna just change that in the next one that I make but that's the process isn't it you remake a pattern and you refine it every time and actually you end up with a better version um, as long as they turn out wearable that's the, what I like so really love this version I'm actually quite surprised because I don't tend to like red on a fabric but actually really love this jumper and every time it's ready I just want to really wear it and the next version I made is the one that I'm wearing so again I hacked the neckline now this fabric is a fabric that is from Sewis Faction it's an art gallery fabric and I just changed the sleeves now on the pattern the marking for the sleeve is here at your arm now when I wear sleeves like that I feel like my whole top half looks quite broad uh, and so I often cut sleeves a bit shorter so I really like sleeves this length and most of my t-shirts have this so I did just um, crop that shorter I had the longer sleeve originally but when I looked at it I was like no I want to crop it a little bit shorter so that's what I did so that slight change I have done a double line of top stitching around the outside and again this is overlocked throughout this one I did pre-wash the fabric but it has shrunk a little bit in the wash so the the shoulder seam has moved slightly it was there but it's moved slightly but actually it's really stretchy fabric so that I'm not worried about that at all um, again I'm getting this little bit of extra fabric here uh, I'm still deciding whether I'm worried about that or not but again the length of the hem is exact and I didn't make any other alterations to the pattern the last one I made, and I'll post a picture, is just a plain white cotton jersey version, but I don't have it at the moment. I made it for a hem party and it's getting some iron-on things put onto it ready for that hem party. So I haven't got that one, but I will just post a picture of the plain white t-shirt. I made that in cotton jersey from Like So Amazing, really high quality, so definitely check that out. And I will link all the fabrics and things down below for those that I've mentioned. So I didn't have any problems putting it together, really simple construction, really easy, everything fits, it's really well drafted and as I said I didn't need to make any alterations to the length which is a surprise because quite often I'm cutting like a couple of inches off the length of things. They didn't take very long, um, maybe the first one was a couple of hours and after that I think I made the plain white one in like an hour, hour and 15 minutes. 
So actually it is a really quick make, which is why I've made so many in such a short amount of time. But I've already got my wear out of them. I've worn each of these at least three or four times already. And I think actually when you make something, you wear it that many times, you're definitely going to make more of them. Well, that's my thinking anyway. And I do sew quite quickly anyway, but yeah, really love them. And I do have a dress version planned. I'm not going to include the ruffle, I don't think, uh, on that one. But the tutorial that I add to this will be the dress version. And I will post a picture on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, then have a look on there. And I will, I'm at Voice of a Creative. So I'll just put that down below. So I'm going to go ahead and film the tutorial now. So I will pop that video in here for you to have a look at. So to do the hacked neckline on the Freya top, so that's to lower a neckline and add in a changed neckband. So with my pattern piece, I actually cut it on the cowl neckline to get it to come down a little bit lower. So the normal neckline is here, but I actually cut it so it would come on the cowl neckline um, and then I can alter it a bit more. So you might want to trace your pattern so you've just got that line there and then cut it like that. Then in terms of the neckband, so this is the mock neckband, so the higher up one. And what I've actually done is just halved it. So this is my neckband piece here. So it's just half of that. And you can see there, that's the length of it. And what I've done is I've just extended it. So I've made it longer and then I can cut it down later. And that's just so I can cut all my fabric out at the same time together. So I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out and I'm just going to sew the shoulder seams a minute before I can show you how to measure the neckline. So I've just tried it on and the cowl neckline is still a little bit high. It needs to come down about half an inch at the back and then about an inch and a half at the front. So to do this, I match the shoulder seams and then fold the bodice in half so it lies nice and flat. It's really important that it does line up because otherwise you will, um, it will look funny. So I've done that. Now it might be that you want to use another pattern as a neckline to cut against, but I just freehand cut it. Um, so it's kind of whatever works for you. When I tried it on, I saw the, the first two kind of spirally shapes I wanted to get rid of. So I will be cutting down a little bit and then joining up to the curve here because actually this seam here looked about right to me. So I might just trim a little bit off of it and then a little bit at the back as well. So I just cut with a curve. If you're feeling nervous about this, just draw it on beforehand. Um, I do this quite often, so I don't necessarily feel the need for that, uh, but you can do. And then that should be a better neckline. I am just going to try that one again to just check that it's right. So that does feel about right for me now. So I'm just going to have it folded in half again um, so I can measure the neckline. So I just use a tape measure and I do this in centimetres because it's a lot easier to work out that way because they're a slightly smaller unit, especially when you're calculating a percentage. So I just measure half the circle. So I just rotate the tape measure as we kind of go round. So that is 29. So doubled is 58. So that seems about right. So I just need to calculate the amount of the percentage amount I need now. Okay, so our measurement was 58. So you do 58 divided by 100 to get how much a percent is. And then I like to do my neck pans about 85%. So then at times 85. And that is 49.3. So I just round up to 50 for that. So I'll just, just show you that again. So my measurement of my neckband was 58. I divide by 100. So that gives me 0.58. And I time by the amount of percent I want the neckband. So times 85. And that equals 49.3, which I'm going to round up to 50. 
So I'm going to take my neckband piece and it's still folded in half so I need to measure 25 centimetres away from the fold. Now you do also need to add on the seam allowance which I'm going to just sew them through on the overlocker so I'm going to add on about half a centimetre for that because I'm just going to sew them straight through but take that into account when you're doing this. So I'm going to measure 25 centimetres and then add on the half centimetre so I'm up to 25 and a half and then I'm going to cut that straight across again you might want to mark it with a ruler and then I've got the length of my neckband I'm just going to go ahead and stitch up that open seam okay so I've stitched together my neckband and I just need to fold that in half so I flatten the seams to one side and then all the way around so then I find halfway so I've got the back seam there and then I just fold it in half so I've got that there and I'm going to mark that with a different coloured pin so I know so I've got the two half marks then I mark the actual dress or top with pins to just get the half marks there as well so I've got points to line up with and then I need to put in the neckband. So I start at the back so I just pin the seam to that pin that I've marked as the back. And then I do the same with the pin that I've marked at the front. And you can tell it's about right if it droops about that much I found. <laughs> So just secure that to the centre front as well. And then the idea is to just stretch the neckband so it fits around. I tend to stretch it slightly more at the front than it is stretched at the back. Um, I don't know why, but that just seems to work better for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. If you do feel that it's overstretching a little bit, you can stretch a bit more out from the back. It's just kind of one of those things that you, as you work on it, it gets better, you get more experienced with it. So I've secured the neckband in place now and I'm going to go ahead and sew that on the sewing machine first. So I use a large just basting stitch and then I will check that it's okay and then do it on the overlocker. So this is before I've done it on the overlocker. So you can see it's spread out evenly. There are no puckers or anything like that. Um, and actually there is a little bit of gathering but that tends to go away when you overlock it that is because you've got this extra fabric here because of the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance so i'm going to do that on the overlocker now and then i will iron it so there is my neckline put in so really nice and smooth and in really nicely and um, i will just go over the edge here with the sewing machine and just top stitch but I'm going to do that at a different time uh, just because I need to change the colour of thread that I've used. If you do have any questions at all about the tutorial or any other questions about Jersey, please feel free to comment below or message me on Instagram. Quite happy to offer help and suggestions for you all. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Goodbye.